Yeah, I'm I'm trying not to be annoyed right now because somebody we're rolling, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Cuz somebody outside I always hate when people drop their indirect death sh on you. That's what I always hate. Death? Yes. Oh. Like, you know, so-and-so's mother, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't care. You know, I just don't. I wish I could pretend, but I don't. Mm -hmm. And so what happened was, well, first they start off by being like, yeah, well, I can, well, Here's the way it really started. I was talking to Zeb and, you know, he's cool. I like him. He's a cool guy. Um, and we were trying to talk about stand up type stuff. And then all of a sudden this other person walks over and turns it into a conversation about them and this mic that they go to, which is in Corpus. And it's like, who cares about Corpus? <laughs> like, do you think we're going to drive to Corpus to go to this mic? Whatever you're talking about. I don't even know what it is right now and I don't care, but I'm trying to be as polite as I can and just thinking this person has to eventually stop talking. That's the way a mouth works, right? <laughs> I've, I've been there so many times. Yeah, and so I'm sitting there waiting for this person to stop talking. Yeah. And then they direct the conversation at me. They're like, oh, it's you. And then they're like, I watch your Instagram. You have little doggies. I have doggies too. And I'm in my head, I'm like, this is an excuse for you to talk about you again. I know what you're doing. You don't care about my dogs. Yeah. You want to talk about you and your dogs right now. So mm -hmm. I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> you know, because that's the way I am when I don't want to talk to people. Yeah. I'll give a quick one word. Let's just end this, you yeah. know? So, yeah, I I do have dogs. But all I said was, yeah. And <laughs> then they're like, yeah, I'm going to be able to do a lot more stuff now, uh, you know, now that mom has mm. a good caretaker. And in my head, I'm like, I didn't even know your mom didn't ever have a good caretaker. I didn't even know you had a mom. <laughs> yeah. I don't like, even know what your name is. Yeah. I, I unfortunately do oh, well. <laughs> know their name. Uh, but I know nothing about their mother, their personal life, any of that stuff, nor do I want to. I don't care. I cannot reiterate this enough, how much I do not care about most of the things people talk to me about. <laughs> and so I'm trying to be polite. And then they're like, so-and-so's mom just died. And I go to like turn away because I've realized that this conversation now, unless I'm going to be really abrupt is just about this person. Yeah. And I'm not interested enough in this person to stick around. And I'm not going to pretend that I am. So I go to walk away and they touch my arm and they're like, hey. And I was like, I don't care. <laughs> That's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you waited till they were like, hey, someone's mom died. And then you turned away. <laughs> I don't care. I, I don't know, even know who we're talking about. I know. That's so funny. And I don't want to inquire. I don't want to yeah. be like, who's Ron? I don't know who Ron is. I don't care who Ron is. I didn't know he had a mother either. I don't know these people. Yeah. I talk to my mother maybe once a month. And that's 100% true. And I actually love her. But I only talk to her once a month. So that should give you a gauge of how much I care about mothers. <laughs> if I only talk to mine once a month, why do I want an update on yours? Why do I want an update on Ron's? <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Slumber Party. Yet another episode of Slumber Party. And I was going to talk about everything you just heard with Justin on the patio. At first, he asked me what I was going through, and I didn't want to go into it. And I told him... I'm not going to talk about it because if it happens here, it's complaining. If we do it while we're recording, it's content. So it's true. I will it's very complain true. here. Uh, with, I'm Ty Rivera, in case you don't remember, in case you got Alzheimer's or you don't know how you ended up on this channel. I don't know what YouTube is doing these days, but I'm Ty Rivera, the absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world. We're here with little Nick. Hello. <laughs> regular co-host here on Slumber Party and producer Justin. What up? Hooch is dead. There. <laughs> I said it. Mm-hmm. It was a horrible accident. I wish it hadn't <laughs> happened, but it did, and he's gone. Mm -hmm. So He got drunk, and he crashed his big wheel 
uh, <laughs> into an embankment. <laughs> the boss baby is no longer with us. He got milk drunk. <laughs> R.I.P. Boss baby. Yeah. So there's that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm I'm annoyed with a lot of things. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys know. I might be quitting actively doing stand up comedy. No, you'll see me at the mics, nope. but you will not nope. see me actually trying to work in this business anymore. <laughs> nope. Nope. I'm done with it all. Nope. Yeah, nope. I don't believe yep. it. Yep, nope. I'm burning a huge bridge right now. The, br- mm-hmm. bridge the biggest bridge right. in Austin <laughs> is being burnt by me. By the time this airs, <laughs> it will have been. It will be smoldering. <laughs> That's what will be happening with that bridge, and I don't care. Because I'm so tired <laughs> and I don't of care. having to humor people that do not do what I do. You know, like I did the Netflix, uh, the Netflix is a joke. What's it called? Festival, their mm-hmm. audition. Ooh. And I told everybody here, this is one of the last things I have in me. That's going to be a, like a, what do you think? Because mm. the fact of the matter is, I don't care what these people think. None of them have ever done what I do. Mm -hmm. And that's what's getting, well, not getting, that's what's gotten just completely unacceptable to me is that I'm constantly being judged by people that don't know how to do what I do, are not capable of doing what I do. Also, I see the people they pick and they haven't come out with who Netflix is yet. So if there's any Netflix people by the time that this comes out that see this and they're like, hey, I got accepted that. Is he talking about me? Of course, I'm not talking about you. I don't even know who you are. I probably don't care about you either, to be 100% honest. And that's one thing that's going to start happening a lot more when people see me is be slow on your approach. Approach me like hot grits because I may not be in the mood for what you're talking about. And I will let you know. And it sounds like I'm joking, but I'm just good at delivering. Because <laughs> I will be letting people know when I don't care about what they're talking about. Because people have really been hitting me with a lot lately. And I've gotten to the point where I'm just done with it. And so when it comes to the Netflix situation, I've seen a lot of people that Netflix picks and they're not good. So it's like, why would I take your opinion into account on any level and anything to do with my industry, which I will say my industry, cause I've been doing this for 21 years now. Today, I believe is where we passed the 21 year mark. Yeah. Yeah. Today. Clap, Nick. I'm clapping. Thank you, thank you, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) But today is 21 years. So I'm I'm really just done with all of that part of it. And these people try to talk to me in some cases, not only like we're equals, but almost like they're my superiors. And it's like, you're a geek in my world. Like, to be 100% honest, just looking, I don't even think you're a cool person. Yeah. (laughs) And one of them I've known forever, Josh Sandoval from Netflix, I've known forever. I've known for a good minute. And he can be cool sometimes, but he's still a geek. And Mm. that's the way I feel about it. So when I'm trying to talk to Josh Sandoval, like we're in a serious conversation, I feel like, no, let's not do that. So I take it back to being fun again with him. So one day, I'm in the green room of Mothership. One of the last times I'll ever be. (laughs) This is months ago. (laughs) But it was in the green room of the Mothership. And he was dating some girl named Shoddy. Uh, And so... I was joking with Josh because we know each other. I've known him since he was 15 years old. That sounds bad. Pause. (laughs) Um, I know his uncle, Renee, who was a comedian, used to write for Paul Rodriguez. Yeah, so his uncle, Renee, was a very Mexican comedian, you know, a very Latino comedian. And I, I... don't think he does stand up anymore, but he's one of the first comedians that I really hung out with that was legit, had done some stuff. Mm. And so he would bring Renee to hang out with us while we'd be doing sets and stuff like that. So that's how I originally met uh, Josh. And so when 
I'm talking to Josh. He was saying something, and I had mentioned that I had been with Tim Dillon right before that because I think that's when me and Tim had either gone on the road or maybe it was Tim had been here in Austin at Mothership. Uh, it was something like that. And so I just was like, oh, yeah, the Tim's my friend. And he's like, oh, Tim's great and saying whatever he's saying. And then so Shoddy comes in and he says, like, you know, actually, my girlfriend works for Tim. And I was like, oh, what does she do for him? And then she was like, uh, he was like, she designed his set for unbo for Unbothered, for uh, Tim Dillon show, show, the most recent one. And I was like, oh, cool. And then. So he com she comes in and she was taking pictures at what's it called? Um, Mothership that night and helping Troy Conrad out who Troy Conrad I've known for at least 19 or 20 years. And she says something and then he's like, oh, honey. <laughs> These people make me sick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey, I see. This is why I'm quitting because <laughs> once I quit, n nobody can hit me up about anything. So understand, by the time you see this, I will be two in two weeks into quitting because I'm not one of those. I'm gonna give you two weeks notice, people. I quit right now. So two weeks after you see this, you'll be like. I'm gonna ruin his career and I'm gonna be like, what career? I quit. So she comes in <laughs> and he's like, honey, um, Ty knows Tim Dillon too. And then, or she he said, Ty knows Tim too. And then I was like, who's Tim? Mm. And then he was like, he was like, Tim Dillon. And I was like, oh, I don't know Tim Dillon. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just playing with him, yeah, yeah. you know, because we're friendly. And like I said, I've known him since he was a kid. So I'm sorry, but if I've known you from, from since you were a kid, I'm probably going to still treat you like a kid and not condescendingly. So I was being fun with him. Yeah. You know, and so that's what I was doing. That's something I would do to my own nephews, you know. And so she gets offended on his behalf, apparently. So when I am like, you know. Oh, yeah, Tim Dillon. You know, I said something like that. And then I start <laughs> laughing with Josh. And then, you know, I ask her, I was like, so you work for Tim? And then she was like, she's like, yeah, I designed a set. And I was like, oh, cool. Do you guys <laughs> hang out? You know what I mean? Did you get to hang out with him at all? And she like gave me some sassy answer. And I felt like this bitch doesn't know who she's talking to. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Let me be nice and pretend. So then she says something about like, Oh yeah, I've known Brian Simpson forever. And then I was like, I was like, yeah, I've known Brian Simpson a long time too. And she was like, do you remember the first time you met Brian Simpson? And I was like, I can honestly say I don't. And she was like, I remember the first time <laughs> I met Brian Simpson. And I was like, cool. When was the last time you met? When was the first time you met Brian Simpson? And then the best part is she couldn't remember <laughs> when she met yeah. Brian. Simpson. <laughs> uh. So, did she? She didn't even just make something up. She was no. Like, ah. She was just like, um, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's stupid. Yeah, it was the dumbest shit ever. So then I see them the next night, and I'm joking with Josh again. And but this time she knows that I know Josh, and we're just being silly or whatever. And I'm joking with him. We're having fun. Mm -hmm. And so that night was just kind of chill. But she was still trying to give attitude, which is like, I don't even understand why you're giving me attitude right now. I was joking with your boyfriend yesterday. I didn't say anything to make you look dumb. So I don't know why you're still secondhand, how, whatever you're feeling. How long has she been working with comics? Um, I don't know. I okay. really have no idea anything about this person's past. Yeah, my guess is that she's just new. Yeah, all I know is she's a cute-ish girl. <laughs> Ish. Not cute enough. <laughs> I'm going to judge you on your merits. You come to me. I'm not looking to f So when women come to me, I'll let you know exactly where you're at in the scale. That's awesome. You know? What a superpower you have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's different when you don't want to f*** them at all, you know? And you're yeah. just like, okay, this is what you honestly are. Cute-ish is what you are. Yeah. So then she's at Skankfest. Taking pictures of Skankfest. Cool. 
You know, I don't, I really have no feelings about this person. I didn't dislike her or anything. It was just like in my head. I was like, at first, I'll be honest. I saw her and I was like, where do I know that girl from? And then it hit me. I was like, oh, yeah, that's Josh Sandoval's girlfriend. And so then I see her on, I think, closing night or maybe the Saturday. So the night before we're done. Because we go to Sunday, right? At Skank Fest? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's Saturday, which I may not be at Skank Fest next year. I'm going to piss a lot of people off this year. Uh, <laughs> we'll we'll see what happens. You're burning the whole bridge. <laughs> You're burning the entire bridge. <laughs> not on purpose, but I'm just not going to hold back anymore. Yeah. Because like people know me for speaking my mind. That's what they think they know me for. They don't realize I hold back a lot. You know, it's not even like I've I'm telling you right now, here's yeah. your notice. Yeah. Like if you decide to cut bait at any point, do so. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. So if I jump ship, you're like, fair enough. I'm fine with every <laughs> I encourage people to because That's I funny. know what I'm going to do. I know that I do not need any of these people. So people like you that are newer in the business. And I don't mean that as an insult when I say people like you, but yeah, like yeah. my friends that are newer they should take that route because the people that have been with me or the people that I don't respect or don't have respect for me might be the opposite with you. Like that's happened a lot in my career where there've been people that haven't been the nicest to friends or people that I know. And then they meet me and they're super cool. So I don't tell people to take on my enemies. That's the dumbest thing young comics do in my opinion is when they take on the enemies of their friends. Yeah. Because it's like that person might be nice to you. And also, if you've got a friend like me, they might have a problem with you being friends with me, but I won't have a problem with you being friends with them. I don't care who anybody is friends with, you know, for if they're cool with you, unless they did something like, you know, kill my dog. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You know, but something outside of that, I I don't really care. I've never picked sides in things unless it's like an actual serious... You yeah, know, like there's some dude, some dude in my old scene like groped a girl, mm-hmm. and then I was like, I don't fuck with this guy anymore. But that's not because I'm pro her; it's because I'm that's dumb. I don't like that because you've got something against love, and I get that. <laughs> All right. But All right. you know, you got a lot of sexual <laughs> hangups, and so did she apparently, or else she would have taken it like a champ and just been like, <laughs> oh, give it a squeeze, feel it out. You're burning every bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Is it up to snuff or not? You're burning. <laughs> <laughs> did you like that? <laughs> when Ty burns the bridge, when Ty burns bridges, the fucking river is on fire underneath. I'm and you know what? Fun with I that. love. And I've been, I've been saying this. <laughs> Cut it, clip yeah. it, clip it. <laughs> crazy burning every bridge. Watch what you say, because we will clip it. <laughs> I'll just have you yeah, just me. on a loop. I love. <laughs> no, of course I'm joking, but uh, but that too, you know, I'm tired of people with because people pretend to care about that stuff, but very few really do when it comes down to it. That was one of my first real things where I had people really let me down was I had been sexually harassed when I first started doing stand up. And because I was new and this person had TV credits, I didn't know how to handle it. So I just would always hide from this person. Literally, that's what I would do is when they would show up, I would make myself scarce. And sometimes we'd be on the same show. And because I wasn't responsive or receptive to their advances, they would give me shows or they would be rude with me. Mm. And so then one day when I had progressed more in my career, and I was doing a lot of stuff because I think at that point I had just done Gabriel Iglesias' show, which was my second appearance on Comedy Central. And I was riding a high and a lot of people were booking me for a lot of stuff. And that's when I was still in L.A., which is the place that at the time mattered for, you know, people booking you. New York, too. Nothing against anybody. If there's any other scene out there that's getting your feelings hurt right now, I don't know you. I don't care about you. <laughs> so whatever you're thinking, it's not in my head. Uh, <laughs> Hooch is in Atlanta right now. Yeah, just like this scene is. This scene I mean, is no, great. Hooch is dead. This He's scene is great. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> but you know, so I like, and so one day we were upstairs in the Laugh Factory because he's a Laugh Factory regular too, 
and he was sitting across from me on a bench and I was sitting on a bench on the other side and uh, he was like, he was like, wow, you're doing really great right now. That's the way he talks. Sounds you know. like a cat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sounds like a cat in a cartoon. Yeah. Wow, well, you're doing really great right now. <laughs> and so I'm trying to be nice because that was when I was still pretty close to not, well, I guess I was like 10 years in, seven years in, something like that, you know? And so still knew enough that I was trying to be nice and I was just like, yeah, thank you. And then he was like, you know, we should um, get together and like exchange professional contacts sometime. And then I was like, I don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you used to harass me when yeah. I was first starting out. And yeah. I was like, and I'm not forgetting about that. And so I got up and I walked away. And then I saw he was booked on Portland of all places. Your don't, hometown. Don't, I hate you. <laughs> okay. No. I gotta go. What pipe, Portland? How do I get this off? <laughs> you can clip it. God mm, damn. Okay. <laughs> You're going to jail by the end of this. I'm me. sending you to jail <laughs> on a on a YouTube short. <laughs> yeah. You said it. <laughs> Something's gonna blow up in Portland tomorrow, and you're never gonna see me again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're gone. You're yeah, out of here. Out of here. <laughs> but. Uh, he, I saw he was headlining the Gay Pride in Portland. And so I was like, how is it this person, because not only did he sexually harass me, he said uh, he sexually harassed, which I'm gonna have to bleep every time I'm saying sexually. Um, yeah, for because really? YouTube really? doesn't really? like sexual harassment being talked about like this uh, while well, using the words, like you gotta, so annoying. But mm -hmm. I will make this money. I will make this eight dollars <laughs> off of this video. That's what, the last one made. <laughs> That's what the last one of these made. My videos. I got paid. Uh, <laughs> I think it was Nick. <laughs> it's Nick. Yeah, it, Rick Diaz. <laughs> yeah. Blame Rick Diaz. Yeah. I got paid two dollars to do a show yesterday. That was pretty cool. That's. <laughs> it's nice, but it's insulting at the same time. Just one guy you know? sent it back. It was in, the, in the group chat, he goes, because we had like a tip thing on Venmo. That was yeah. all. That's all. And he goes, hey, guess who just got paid to do comedy? Drop your Venmos. And I see $2. And I laughed, but I took it. Or yeah. Whatever. <laughs> and this this dude in the chat, he goes, $2? With a kind of a question mark. And he goes, well, if you don't want it, send it back. With a laughing face. And he did send it back. <laughs> he just sent it back to the guy. He's like, this so. he probably knew he'd been overpaid <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah couldn't accept that with a clear yeah. conscience yeah. i don't do, that's far too much for what i did yeah <laughs> i know what i do <laughs> <laughs> i know what i did at kelly's irish pub <laughs> it's yeah. worth more than two dollars and a drink ticket but um yeah so I was very open about it on Facebook and was like, um, how could this person be headlining? Because what I was going to say was he not only did that to me, he also did it to Joe Dosh, who is now Fifi Dosh. Hey, girl. But <laughs> at the time, he was Joe Dosh. Hate to dead name her. But that's what it was at the time. Let's be historically correct. It wouldn't make sense as a gay Histori man. Historically correct. That's <laughs> so funny to put it like that also well because it wouldn't make sense to say this gay man harassed this woman yeah you know and mm -hmm. so that was before her transition yeah. which i know some people say that trans people are always that way yay there's a point where you're a man or you're a woman let's accept that <laughs> yeah i used to talk <laughs> on the phone regularly with Joe Dosh. <laughs> I've only talked to Fifi maybe once, sent a text like, congratulations on your transition. We should, every time, every time something like this happens, can you edit in a bridge on fire? <laughs> <laughs> like another one? And then like on the side, we'll have like five bridges burning down. <laughs> like live videos. But. <laughs> bridge counter. Yeah, bridge counter. That's, yeah. that's kind of yeah. what I'm going for. Yeah. So, <laughs> Fifi <laughs> harassed Fifi when she was Joe. <laughs> Ooh, it's fun giving up. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know really giving up was going to be this much fun. But, <laughs> but, 
But so that, ha- you know, like he harassed her. Him. <laughs> I'm just, I don't know. You know, I'm an old woman. <laughs> She's just confused, guys. I'm yeah. an old woman. She's going through a time. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, it's my change of life. Yeah. I'm having a hot flash. Set in your ways. But so. You want to drink? <laughs> no, but thank you. He did it to that person. And then he also did it to uh, Ryan. I can't remember Ryan's name last night, right now, but he's super, super cute. Um, You know, and he's very honest about the fact that he goes through uh, fluctuation in weight. So sometimes he gets like really heavy and then he's not as much the gay ideal. But when we were young, when he was getting harassed, he was like a cute, cute boy. I, and he knows I call him this, but I often refer to him as the Anna Nicole Smith of comedy. <laughs> because, cause, you know, Anna Nicole Smith, when she's big, she's big. But when she's small, she's really a sight to behold. You is know, that, she really is something is special. <laughs> <laughs> a little bridge, little tiny bridge. <laughs> But yeah, but he knows, Ryan knows. I wish I could remember his last name because I would say it. But um, they had both gone through it too where they had been harassed by him. Actually, it was a joke Ryan did on stage that made me even think about it or really like, you know, made me like, go back. that that really was. Because I think as a guy, in a lot of cases, you don't think of yourself as being sexually harassed. Like you'll think of somebody as being a creep or being, you know, not being cool or whatever, but you didn't really think of it in that context, especially back then when it was happening, you have to remember, like it was towards me just starting. So yeah. we're talking 2004, 2005. I feel like gay dudes too, people they hear a gay dude tell that story and they're kind of just like, ah. Yeah, you, well they think- You guys are crazy. That's exactly <laughs> what it yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what it yeah. is. And it is a bit of a problem, you know? I had, I had to tell a dude to not off in the sauna today so that was pretty cool really <laughs> yeah yeah I'm, yeah because i was i'm just like hot <laughs> sitting here and i look up and his towel was off which is normal but he was hard yeah. and he was like oh and he like got embarrassed and i was like i have to, oops whatever and i tried to be like hey i'm not like gonna beat you up and i'm not pissed off yeah because we had just been talking about f- something and I was like, no, I have gay friends. What I get it. Embarrassing. Yeah. But I thought he got the message. You know what I mean? Like, hey, I caught you, though. Was so, it just you two at this time? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was like, whatever, no biggie. And then he took that as like... And I, I basically went, I'm not homophobic. And he took that as, oh, so I can jerk off in here. And so I like looked up again. I was like, bro, what the f- He's like, my bad. And then I caught him again, like later. I was like, hey, stop. And then he and was tried he doing again. like the slow stroke? Was he doing the I don't know, man. Risk? I didn't try to try to block Jesus it out. Jesus Christ. How much what? Well, what good are, was he hot? No. How much eye contact? All right. Yeah. You, just one scared one. You saved yourself. One scared I just one like that. Okay. Just oh. And I was like, okay. well, you, you know. <laughs> I don't know. It was we I've never had to tell another dude to not jerk off. I just thought that was implied to not fucking jerk off in front of me. You just got a, you got that face. That's what he said. He's like, you just got that jerk off in front of me face. Yeah, you shut you up. He did not a- say that. Yes, he did. He said that earlier. He said you got that look. You got the rob me at a bus stop, jerk off in front there, of me in the there sauna. It is. There it is. He like listed off a few things. Uh, well, you've got a lot of faces. <laughs> I feel like I have one. I feel like this doesn't. This does this say jerk off and punch me? Jerk off and rob, rob <laughs> me and jerk off in front of me. That's what my look says. Sort of, maybe what? one. Yeah, <laughs> that wouldn't be the one you'd guess though. <laughs> what if some dude walked up? He's like, "Give me your phone. <laughs> Give then, me your wallet and your phone." Then you know that people are a hundred percent right about you. Yeah, <laughs> it's like okay, well, yeah. Is it the beanie? <laughs> Not, I your don't know. <laughs> Not your face. It's my face. But yeah, so I posted on Facebook <laughs> about it and a bunch of people turned on me like I had said something wrong when all I did was call somebody out for sexual harassment. And people at that time were pretending like they really did care about that kind of stuff. And I was just 
tired of this person because I had done a taping with them. My first taping ever, I had they were on the same show mm -hmm. and they used that as an opportunity to sexually harass me. And I literally had to hide the entire day because it was a taping. So we had to get there at something like noon. And then we didn't actually do the taping until like 7 p.m. And so during the day they had us doing like production type stuff, like photo shoot, that kind of stuff. And there was a point where this is the most nightmare situation ever. The photographer said, cause there were two guys and two girls on this taping. It's called um, One Night Stand Up and it was on the Logo Network. If anybody wants to Google and see who this person is. Um, but I, um, since there were two guys and two girls, they told me, they told us, they were like, why don't you guys pair up? And they had this little table there and we'll just take some shots. Like you guys are on dates. And in my head, I was like, this is a nightmare situation, hmm. you know? And so I had to sit across from him and he took the opportunity and I wish the photographer was still around or I knew the photographer, but there's a good chance they don't have the extra shots or whatever. But there was a point where he literally put his tongue in my ear while we're doing a photo shoot. Nope. And I like literally did like a, what are you doing? Like yeah. that kind of thing, you know? And, but again, <clears throat> he treated me like I was doing something wrong when I did that, you know? And so then I just had to hide. And so of course, by the time I say this on Facebook, I'm mad, mad. So I say it. <laughs> and then a bunch of people come out against me like I'm doing something wrong by calling somebody out for doing something that they shouldn't have been doing. Like you would be surprised at the number and also the number of other LGBT people that like were acting like I had done something wrong. Even the booker of Portland Pride, Belinda Carroll, was uh, said that I was gaslighting. What would have they rather you done? Never said it. Okay. You know, because as much as these people and that chick that I mentioned, Belinda, she's like a, supposedly a real SJW, you know, f against all that stuff. But here I am being honest. I get told I'm gaslighting. And it's like. <laughs> <laughs> no, they got Wait a minute. So the gay community is nefarious? This is crazy. <sighs> I would have. <laughs> I does that's weird. They're so what year, fake. What year was this? Um, this had to be 2014, maybe 2015, somewhere in that range. So, and they were like, they were like, "You pussy!" Like that's basically what they were doing. Or no, they were saying that I was making it up. Some people were saying I got all the things that you hear women talk about. See, this is that's why what it sounded like. This is why I do understand what women are talking about in certain cases and why people choose not to come forward. But like I got told all the things that regular that regular women that women talk about, you know, it, it, like that I was lucky anybody found me that attractive was one thing I was told. Um, I got told that uh, I was making it up. I got told that I was desperate for attention. I got told all sorts of things like that. And it was all somewhere I still have screenshots and one day I will come out with all of them. And it might be when this episode comes out if I can scroll back far enough or find it in my hard drive. Cause I know I do have screenshots of the people telling me this kinds of thing. And it would be people like, you know, LGBT comedians and people that you wouldn't expect that would tell me that. You know, there was a comedian by the name of Andre Kelly that's a gay comedian that said, oh, Ty's desperate for attention again. And it's like, wait, what? Like, you think that's what I'm doing for attention is saying that people have done things that they haven't done because that's not what I'm known for. Then in Vegas, people always talk about me in Vegas and they're like, you love to start drama. I called somebody out for stealing a joke that was known for stealing jokes. Everybody acted like I had done something wrong. Nobody ever disputed that was my joke because they all had heard me do the joke. I, I feel like there's a lot of communities that just would rather not have conflict. And so whoever starts a conflict, everyone's so pussy whipped. I don't know the better word. That's not the right word. But everyone's such a pussy that whoever initiates the conflict is now the bad guy, not whoever actually f***ed up. Yeah, well, that's why I quit. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's why I'm done with all of it because yeah. I've had so many times where like people don't care when things happen to me, but with everybody else I'm supposed to care, with strangers I'm supposed to care, 
you know, with things on the news, I'm supposed to care, but then she happens to me and nobody cares, but mm. nobody ever disputes what I'm saying. Mm. Nobody's ever said that I was lying about having my joke stolen because everybody knew that I did that joke because they would see me do it. I even produced a recording of him after one of my sets telling me that he liked the joke and I put it on a podcast. Mm. You know? Ty brings evidence to the table. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, and still, yeah. Did you everybody did treated you me like him, I'd done something wrong. Did you ever confront him in person? I confronted him the moment I saw it happen. And then he still didn't stop. Well, he, he did this thing because we hadn't been getting along. And the reason that we weren't getting along, because here's the deal. I've been warned by Russell Peters that he was a joke thief because I had worked with him, you know, in Vegas before he moved to Vegas. And then he told me that it was a situation where he hadn't realized it was somebody else's joke that he thought he had written it. Parallel thinking type thing. Mm -hmm. And he was like, so I just stopped doing the joke. That's what he said when we talked about it. So then I ended up hearing another story like that and I talked to him about it and he was like, you know, that that wasn't a thing, you know, it wasn't. And so like my thinking was, okay, maybe this guy used to steal jokes, but who am I to tell somebody that they cannot change? I'm not seeing him steal jokes now. So if you change, you change, you know, it's not like, to me, it's not the worst crime in the world to steal a joke. Like, does it need to stop? Yes. But is it something that's completely unforgivable? No. Yeah. You know, it's like a lot of people have done it when they're first starting out. They don't know any better. They don't think it's that big of a thing. That's what a lot of people think of comedy anyway. Like regular people think that that's what comedy is. But you all do the same jokes. Mm. That's what people think comedy is. Mm. Mm. You know, so I understand if somebody's new and they up i'm not gonna hold them to that for the re for the rest of their lives you know all i knew was now he wasn't doing it but then he ends up doing it to me and then it was after we got in this argument hmm. and so you know i approached him as soon as he got off stage and he was like no get away from me ty get away from me ty and acting like literally that's what he did and he like arched his back it was the most gay thing ever the way that he handled <laughs> yeah. it you know and so then <laughs> I've, I told never, him, I've never seen someone arch their back when threatened that's pretty yeah that is pretty gay yeah and his name's tricks he's from canada he still <laughs> works in vegas his tricks i think t-r-i-x-x -X. And like I said, I made full videos about it and talked about it at the time and stuff like that. But like I said, I had heard like, you know, the the whispers about that before. Then he also has some weird foot scandal, too, you know, where he foot was. Foot scandal? Yeah. Scandal? Yeah, because he worked for, I think it was Much Music, allegedly, you know, because I don't remember if that's exactly who it was he worked for. But whatever Canada's was MTV was. That's what yeah. he worked for. And so he had this scam he was running where he would tell open mic guys <laughs> that there was this uh, audition. It, you can find it on, uh, what's it called? It, like, it's one of the first things that comes up if you Google his name, if it still is. But it's on Vice is where you can find it. What they did an name? article about it. Tricks, T-R-I-X-X. They did an article about it? Yeah, they did an article <laughs> about it on Vice. Ty Rivera so Inside the, the year's one? long foot mystery that... <laughs> oh yeah, and then mine is the second it's, one. It's so great. Yeah, you're the second <laughs> one. <laughs> Your shit is dot net. It's dot com, but it has a problem with the redirect, and I need to deal with somebody on that. But I own both, and okay. like technically, if you put in tyrivera dot com, it'll, it'll redirect you to the dot net. Almost I just all young out. comedians have feet. That's how the fucking article. Yeah, <laughs> that's the guy. They, mm, get it. Yeah, that's and yeah, and that's when I made the video about or I, like it's not a video, it's just audio, but with the that you know what's it called? Because at the time I was just doing my podcast audio only, and so it's on my YouTube, and uh, you know, it, like that situation happened, hmm. and uh, like I said, everybody knew that I wasn't lying about it, but everybody treated me like I'd done is, something wrong. Is that him on TikTok? He has TikTok? Yeah, he's actually really popular on social media now, like, you know, TikTok and Instagram. He has a pretty, pretty big Instagram as well. 
Do we care? No. Yeah. Ew. Ew, but we know no. about this. Yeah. Well, you know, it makes sense that that's the kind of stuff that he's doing. That's the kind of content. I guess he's moved on to women's feet now. Oh, that's good. Because yeah, he was having guys. Send he looks him a bit different. Pictures of. Fatter. Well, he yeah, looks like shit what... because he's yeah. drinking yeah. himself to death because Holy he's. Holy shit. Mm, well. <laughs> It just made me laugh. It's so funny. He really is. You know, when you're... Tricks his toe fetish. 2019, yeah. <laughs> when you're not being a good person, literally, you start to deteriorate because you will start slowly killing yourself, whether yeah. that's through alcohol or drugs or whatever it might be. That's why people can say whatever they want about me, but I look great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's because I have a clear conscience. I can sleep at night. I don't yeah. have trouble with, you know, I sometimes chuckle about things that I've done <laughs> at the end of the night. <laughs> that La other people might laughing think are, yourself to sleep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Other people might think <laughs> that it's vicious that I said something, but I usually feel pretty good about my decision. So I'm like, yeah. yeah. Except for the other yeah. night at roast battle, I'll admit. Mm. So I was a little bit mean with one of the battlers, but I went ahead and like apologized to him afterwards. And I told him how it happened. And what happened was, I had said something to him that came off a little bit mean. Like I said, that it seemed like he didn't write jokes. And then the audience <laughs> kind of turned on me. Kinda. And so I had oh, to no double shit. down to the audience. And it looked like I was really coming for him. But really, it was me letting the audience know, I don't care about your opinions. I'm going to say what I say. I'm a judge. What did the crowd do? Take it like everybody else. <laughs> 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 like what are you gonna That's do like, well, I, I didn't know if they were gonna if they laughed or you know because sometimes you double down they go oh that's very funny and they'll laugh yeah know? i don't remember i think we just decided to agree to disagree in a way but yeah. they understood they weren't gonna shame me about anything i said and then we went back to having fun after that like there were four or five battles and i was on it that night as far as being a judge and anybody will tell you that night i was killing it so it's like if I have one dud, you're just going to have to accept that. You know, I did a great set at the beginning and this was like maybe the third or fourth battle. And so it was whatever. And then we went right back to having fun after that, you know. And like yeah. I said, I apologize to him personally because I did feel bad about it coming off like I was being mean to him. Because I'm even when I'm being bitchy on the roast battles, I'm not trying to be mean to people. And I'm certainly yeah. not trying to emotionally scar anybody. And I know that some people do care about my opinion because people have heard about me. <laughs> and so I know that, you know, my words carry weight sometimes. So I will apologize to people or let people know that if I, if I feel like I've messed up, then I will make that right, you know, at least person to person. And so, um, but yeah, so it's what happened just to wrap it up with the <laughs> shoddy situation. Uh, we're at... Because in case anybody doesn't remember, Josh Sandoval from Netflix and his girlfriend. And then Josh isn't there for Skank Fest. His girlfriend is taking pictures for Troy Conrad, you know, helping Troy Conrad out. Oh, was that the way it worked? Okay, I didn't know that. So what happened was she comes up to me and again with that same bitchy attitude, because I don't know who the f*** she thinks she's talking to. <clears throat> Because like I said, I saw her on Friday and she was just taking pictures and I didn't go f with her or even like say hi to her. Nothing. You know, I just like I don't I don't care about these people. You yeah. know, I'm not going to there. You get a zero read from me. I just was like, I think I've seen that person before. Oh, yeah, that's the girl that was Josh Sandoval's girlfriend. I move on. Yeah. And so then she I'm standing with somebody. And then that person walks away and she was like, so um, do you want to go do some headshots? And then I was like, uh, I was like, no, but thank you. And then she was, and that's literally the way I said it. I wasn't a dick. I literally said, no, but thank you. And then she was like, uh, she was like, oh, are we dealing with a little bit of insecurity? And then. Oh, that's not. <laughs> oh, no. And then I was like, I was like, who the f 
do you think you're talking to? I said no. <laughs> do I have to have a reason for why I tell you no, or can I just tell you no? Ooh. And then she was like, oh, I was just saying. And I was like, no, let's go back to the energy we were at before. Don't try to change it now. Let's go back to that energy. And then she was like, I, I, was, just, I was just, I was like, okay. Anytime anybody tells you no, just leave it at no, especially me. I don't know who you think you're talking to right now. I am not that guy. <laughs> yeah. And she was like, I heard she cried afterwards, but that's, uh, I'll tell you honestly. That didn't, that didn't come up the chain. When people God, cry actually, that way. Actually, I wish I would have heard about that. Yeah. This is the first time I heard about that. Yeah, I told Troy about it afterward because, you know, I was like, I yelled at your assistant, you know, and so he was just like, he started laughing and he was like, well, they got to learn one way or another. Mm. And because really, I'm not in the wrong for just saying I don't want to take pictures. That's with a you. horrible response to no, I don't just a no. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you. No, anything. And she oh, are you feeling insecure? Yeah. And she wasn't That's trying to be funny. This wasn't like because I would say that to you. No, That's some shit I would be, say to you. Well, Even if you were trying to be funny, that's not going to well, give you what I'm, you want in that moment. Right. Right. I could see where. But I would do that to you because I know you. I'm like, oh, you having a bad hair day? I'd, you know, yeah, with you yeah, or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, she doesn't, she doesn't know you, and if she wasn't being trying to even be funny, that's fucking a crazy thing to say. You know, I have a really like when it comes to me and people at places that I work or events that I work or festivals or however you want to put it, I have a really clear way that I look at things. Like the people who are on the technical side doing camera work, taking pictures, you know, whatever your thing is, I usually am super, super cool with you. That's the way I feel because you're there to do your job. I'm there to do my job. Our jobs don't really intersect, but in a way they kind of do. But we're, we're still secondary. Huh? We're still secondary. And I we don't. I don't necessarily feel that, like me personally, I don't necessarily feel that way, but I do feel like we're just doing two separate things. So I shouldn't be in your way and you shouldn't be in mine. I'm saying that as a fact. We yeah. are secondary and that you are, you as the artist should be held to a higher uh, respect of you wouldn't want to put anybody in a position of feeling insecure in any moment because at any moment they would go on stage or you, you don't know what their world is at that moment. Yeah. You don't. Do well, that. that's what I was just gonna say. Once you piss me off, that's <laughs> and where then you we do end it to up. Tie. <laughs> Once yeah. you piss me off, that's where we end up. Like one time, I, I had this comic that uh, I was on a military tour this time, and this comic had been trying to bully me, and he was a producer of the military tour, and he just got mad because he was eating shit every set, <laughs> and I was doing well every set. And so he ended up turning into a hater. And like, he started with me on night one, to tell you the truth, where he asked me about my Jesus tattoo and he was black. So he was like, you know, who's that? And then I was like, it's was that a joke. I was like, it's a zigzag man. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> and then, that's pretty funny. That's really funny. And he was like, no, really, who is that? And then I was like, you know who it is. And then he was like, he was like, no, I don't tell me. And it's before he was done like this, you know, it was more just a regular Jesus, you know? Yeah. And I was like, I was like, it's Jesus. And then he was like, but Jesus is black. And then I just looked at him and I was like, okay. Yeah. And then he was All like, right. he was like, yeah, well then why would you have that Jesus on your arm? And I was like, whatever, you know, and literally yeah. that's the way I handled it. I was like, whatever. And then he was like, he was like, yeah, but I mean, explain to me if Jesus was black, he was trying to press you. For why real, you huh? have that? Jeez. And then I just looked at him and I was like, I was like, this Jesus is the same color as me because it's a tattoo on my yeah. arm. I'd look pretty stupid with a black Jesus tattooed on my arm, don't you think? <laughs> and so there was a point later on, because that was just me first letting him know, quick warning shot, like, yeah. let's not do this. <laughs> yeah. So then we get a couple days in and he's still bugging me about stuff and he just kept picking stuff to pick at me with. So I finally lost yeah. it and told him that he needed to get funny. You know what I mean? I was like, that's what <laughs> you need to worry about. I was like, you've been eating it. Because the, the way that the shows work, because there were four shows and there were four of us. And so the way that the shows worked was they were rotating. So one show you'd host, then you'd go second. You know what I mean? Like, so okay. it rotated like that. And I was like, I've killed it in every position. You've eaten shit in every position. So why don't you stop bugging me and worry about your writing or what it is you're doing? <laughs> yeah. And then his cousin, who was like a camera guy, 
because they were supposed to be recording it to make like, I don't know what, they should have made a documentary as fun as I was being. Uh, and Kabir Singh was there. Like everybody was in the, like we're all in this van at the time. It's me, Kabir Singh, Nima Williams, and the other comedian that was harassing me, getting on my nerves, I should say, it was Daniel Dugar. And so <laughs> Daniel Dugar then, uh, <laughs> like his cousin was like the camera guy, absolutely pointless, had no idea what he was doing, but was <laughs> making the same money that we were. I don't even know, this show was called Keep It 100. <laughs> and I got fired for keeping it 100. But what happened was, <laughs> is uh, the camera guy tried to like chime in while I was yelling at Daniel because I was finally tired of him. And what I told him exactly was, I'm telling you're technical. I shouldn't even know what your voice sounds like. <laughs> it's fair. And that's the way I feel once you piss me off. <laughs> yeah. We're all equals until we're not. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's up to you. Yeah, I really do feel like that. I do. I do yeah. notice with you. I think with me, even in, even in situations where I want to be mad, I try to like hit it. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna be. I gotta confront this person in a nice way. Yeah. With you, you're like 100 percent the nicest dude, until a situation comes where, and then you flip. Yeah. You just hit it instead of like where I'll be like 50 percent nice, for five minutes. To get my point across or whatever. Yeah. You're just like, all right, 100% fuck you for 30 seconds. You just stomp the thing out. How about just focus on being 100% honest? Yeah, I just, you know, it's part of that thing. I've been, you know, te living in Texas has helped me with this. But part of the reason I've stayed away from Minnesota is it's all fake nice. I know they have that saying, Minnesota nice. Yeah, it's all, it's gar it's all on, on the front. They're going to be really nice to, to you. The second they, I had a cop do it to me. I had a cop. I was driving a friend home and I'd never driven a truck before. I wasn't used to how long they were. And mm -hmm. I kind of like hit a curb going around the corner. My friend was drunk. I wasn't. They breathalyzed us. I was fine. Had nothing in my system. My friend got fucked, right? But he goes, hey, why weren't you drinking? Usually when I uh, pull teenagers over, they're both drunk. And I go, I'm trying to, you know, I drank a little in high school. I'm trying to like not, I'm trying to not drink in high school. I had one beer at noon and then I was like, I should probably... I remember that I'm trying to quit, so I put the beer down and I haven't drank since. And he goes, good job. Fist bumped me. Literally fist bumped me. He goes, that's a great dude. Good. I'm glad you're nipping it in the butt young, usually. Nipping it in the butt at noon. That day at noon. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, at noon. And this was fucking two in the morning, by the way, yeah. when we got pulled over. He's like, good job, dude. I'm glad you're trying to, you know, get out of this soon. People, alcoholism, whatever. Uh, think nothing of it. Two weeks later, I get a letter in the mail. Child admitted to consuming alcohol prior in the day, four hundred dollars <laughs> worth of tickets. For you? Yeah, for the guy from the guy who fucking fish bumped me and said, "Hey, great job." Well, don't expect them to be honest. With well, you. no, but that's the entire state is like that. The entire uh, state is like, I don't want any problems uh, it, yeah. while you're here, and then the second you're gone, they're like, "All right, let's fill out the paperwork." Yeah. Let's, mm. I, you know, and I didn't realize how much, you know. That does affect you. I didn't like it. Obviously, I I didn't I like I didn't like it enough to leave. But you, I was as nice as I could be for a long time with people. Like so, I you really weren't always was. you weren't always this. Put your no, foot down I was in. raised to be very respectful with people, and right. people wasted it. You know, people <laughs> really did. They shit on me a lot. Like that's yeah. why I say I'm at the point where I, that I'm at. Because like when I first came into the business. You know, I really was trying my best to do everything right. And people just kept shitting on me yeah. all the time. And then, you know, I'd finally react because I had people do shit like spill drinks on me just to be like an asshole. You know what I mean? And like pretend, on purpose? <laughs> pretend it was an accident, but wow. it, you just happened to be mad at me and now this glass is in my lap. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and there's no reason that that should have happened. You know, I had people um, be shitty with me because literally I just had done better than them on a show. I had people not tell people not to let me carpool with them places because I had beat them in comedy contests. This is something that literally happened. Mm. I've had a lot of things like that happen. So now I'm just done with all of it. And I feel like, <laughs> you know, if I just am completely honest, even more so about everything and people can either take that or not take it. And I don't care because I really don't 
I don't feel like I have to do this anymore. You know, like I feel like no matter what I do, it will make money. And so whether that's YouTube or just doing an occasional one-off show and YouTube combined or maybe just, I don't know, I'll figure it out. Yeah. But I'm not worried at all about like the comedy industry. I mean, like I've had to navigate this stuff all along anyway. It's like nobody, nobody, I mean, like nobody really has done with the exception of like Gabriel Iglesias, Tim Dillon, other comics have done things for me that have been very nice and taken care of me and made sure that I was okay. But as far as the actual industry goes, the industry has not been good to me at all. Mm. Even when I've been on my best behavior, they, they just haven't. So it's like, at, at what point do you not expect me to just say Fuck you and yeah. let you know that I don't care about you or your opinion or think that you're anybody? You know, I mean, like we talk about Netflix, Robbie Pra, the guy that's the main guy of Netflix comedy, he's known of me since Joe Coy days and I was killing it back then, you mm -hmm. know? And, but yeah, let's watch Nikki Glaser eat shit another year. <laughs> <laughs> Clip it. You know what? Clip it. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. I'm sorry. No, go back. Go back. Find Maybe a real. Maybe that one wasn't necessary. But... Find a real. I want a real picture <laughs> and then like, blow it up uh, like this. Bit. Just because it we'll was. We'll do it in post. Just because it wasn't <laughs> yeah. necessary doesn't mean it wasn't true. I like true. that. Go that. You know? Go that one on the bottom left. I feel like that 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 describes the vibe. Because that's very real. That's just a real yeah. bridge up here. <laughs> Yeah, you know, like, but it's true. You know what I mean? You know how many times I've watched Nikki Glaser eat shit in real life and on TV? It's like, I can't get away from this bitch eating shit. <laughs> <laughs> I kill it everywhere. Nobody's ever heard of me. I'm doing it the wrong way. You know what I mean? Like, the trick to this business is eating shit and keeping your composure while you do it so they can add her laugh track later. That's what the trick is to this business. Yeah, yeah. Cut the balls. <laughs> yeah, that's what Cut it is. Cut the balls, he said. Um, before we get out of here, I'll tell you exactly why that is. The reason that that is, the is because less talented people are easier to control. Yeah. Whoa. If you're lucky to be there and you know you're lucky to be there, you're always going to do exactly what they tell you. Mm. If you're a person like me, Whoa. you might say f it when they told you you're not supposed to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense because you're just like, well, I'm just so happy to have this opportunity. Yeah. And you better stay <laughs> happy to have this opportunity <laughs> right. because we both know you shouldn't be here. Wow. So, shut your mouth. That's why when Nikki Glaser, remember, she did a joke about Britney Spears back at the VMA or not VMAs. It was one of the roasts, I think it was. And she talked about Britney Spears and said something about her being like a horrible mother or something like that. And then a couple years later, when the tide turned and everybody was talking about free Britney, she publicly apologized for that same joke. That's because somebody told her to do that joke back then and somebody told her to apologize more recently. Mm. And if you watch her, her uh, Tonight Show appearance, argue different mm. tell me that she's not speak on it in the comments yeah argue in the comment argue amongst yeah yourselves. let's hear about it in the comments if you really hate <laughs> anything i said then put it there because i'm gonna tell you this is not gonna be a good place for it put it in the comments that's where you can because you tell me this kind of shit in real life and i'll tell anybody this because i know some of you are local to austin and you're gonna come to me and you're gonna be like, why did you say, and I'm either gonna yell at you or I'm gonna treat you like you don't exist and walk away. I'm not gonna entertain you and be like, oh yeah, let's talk. Like the other night, and I lied when I said, I'll tell you this and get out of here. I'm gonna tell you one more thing and get out of here. <laughs> the other night I was right here in Creek at the, standing near the bar, um, which for anybody that doesn't know, we'll put this towards the beginning. Uh, we come to you every week from the Creek and the Cave here in Austin, Texas. Come check us out sometime. Anyway. <laughs> it's going to be so off. Crazy like. plug to do in the beginning. Be like, all right, now, f 
fuck everybody. <laughs> exactly. Fuck everybody the everywhere. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so I'll funny. handle that part of the end. <laughs> <laughs> I, I may have the done, only bridge. I may have done this. Seventeen, <laughs> seventeen bridges on fire, yeah. and then the creek is the yeah. one. But like, come to the fucking creek. The, right, the so creek's <laughs> cool, though. Yeah, I may, I may have done this a time or two. <laughs> I do a little bit of editing myself. I don't know if anybody knows, but I do a little bit of editing myself in my spare time. You're amazing time. at it. <laughs> Thank you. But it's, I'm ridiculous. It's funny. But same, same. I'm right here at the uh, at the bar of the creek, and this guy walks up to me. He's from Chicago, and he's like, you know, hey, I went ahead and checked out your Instagram, and I think it's really cool, and I like the way that you call comedians out and stuff like that. But be careful, like, not to burn any bridges because, you know, stand up comedy is like a brotherhood. And I looked at him and I was like, I don't need anybody's help with what I do. I've been me for a long time. And he was like, no, I was just saying. And I just walked away. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Bro, every one of these stories. fucking. We didn't chat any further. There was no, <laughs> like, you know. Was this guy, how old do you think this guy was? Your age? Younger? My age. How my dare age. you? What? <laughs> what? It doesn't sound what? Like my age. Is there anybody my age around here? Oh, like it's impossible to be younger than you? Is that what you're trying to say right now? <laughs> How could he be younger than me? <laughs> I'm 14 years old. <laughs> no, I'm saying everybody here is younger than me. So when you say my oh, age, okay. I'm like, well, who else is my age around here? I don't know, dude. It's not what I meant. Okay. Uh, who was? Your, what comedy age? He probably was like, I don't know, 25. No, not that's that's young. Like probably the 29 to 35 age range. Okay. Somewhere around there. Maybe 27, something like that. Yeah. I don't actual know. Actual age, not comedy yeah. age. Yeah, his actual so age. So what was his comedy age? Oh, like probably four years at the most, five. Okay. You okay. know, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's where that's what I meant is like weird for someone you know yeah they didn't even know you like that either which is kind of weird but. i think just people are used to treating other people like suggestion boxes you know yeah i didn't like that you said and also he was from chicago like i said which chicago is kind of politically correct right now that's where they're it's at. the midwest yeah, yeah. They're, well they're you know chicago has become sort of like denver like where they're trying to be really careful about people's pronouns. Like everything around Chicago Minneap is still Minneapolis. Illinois and you know what I mean? Like that kind of stuff. But like as far as what Chicago's vibe is, because I've talked to a few of the comics out there and they say how kind of miserable that part is because they're going through a real, yeah, you know, a real situation there where it's like they're trying to be on their best behavior and mind people's pronouns. I, and hate, I hate the feeling of that. I remember being in that in Minnesota. It is such a shitty... Like the, the beyond the political whatever where you stand, the feeling in the room of being in a place, it fucking feels like shit. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, Minneapolis is kind of like that too. Well, you so. know, when I was young, that's when the Matthew Shepard situation was happening, where he had been literally killed, and you know, uh, like hung on a on a fucking uh, what do you call it? Not barbed wire, but the um. What they used to keep in the cattle? Is that the barbed wire? Barbed wire. Okay, yeah. that's barbed wire. Not the electric. I think razor wire was razor the other wire. one. I'm razor about. wire, yeah. But barbed wire, because yeah. it was where they had the cattle, you know? And so they, yeah. two guys lured him into, thought he was going to have a threesome, you know? And then they decided to bash him, and they, like, oh, left him for dead. And it was super cold, and that they found him, you know, like... He was pretty much dead when they found him, but I think not completely. I think he died at the hospital or in the, like, whatever. But, like, and that was an actual hate crime. And so, like, that's when I was young. You know, that's also closer to when it was a little before my time that this one happened. But uh, right before was when Boys Don't Cry happened, which was the trans man, you know, who they had discovered was a trans man, and then that one was a hate crime too. They, I think they had shot him. Mm. Mm. But what I'm saying is, this is when I was young and gay, and we weren't being overly sensitive about these things. Yeah. And there was real shit happening back then, which I'm not saying it doesn't happen now, but it yeah. doesn't, it's not like it was then where 
people knew and nobody cared. Yeah. Well, I feel like you you didn't really have any ability to be like that because you were in the trenches back then. If yeah, you really yeah. start a bitch and you just get beat up, right? I mean, it's... Yeah, well, I'm not guessing. me, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tile run hands, you hear that? <laughs> can catch the fade I don't want to ever fight anybody again in my life, but when I was younger, yeah. I used to get in a lot of fights, and it wasn't, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't, like, a thing where I was going to let people beat me up. Because when I was younger, I went through that, you know, because I was a, a soft boy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't want to be fighting people and stuff like that, and my mom would always tell me not to fight anybody. I was that kid. Yeah. Like, my mom told me not to get in fights, be a good boy and like literally I would have people physically bully me and Mm -hmm. I would always just put up with it and then one day I snapped and then that was the first time that I really got in a fight and then at at that point you know because that happened in like seventh or eighth grade or something like that yeah and then it was just like I I got real like hot tempered and would basically pop anybody that would get crazy with me you know I mean like because I had held it in for so long and I was like you know it was another version of I quit. It was, I was yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why you can't yeah. quit. It was me and Junior I'd be like, I, can, I quit. Nope. I, can, I quit all of nope. this yeah. shit. And I can just, I can half relate to that yeah. at the moment. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like I I never got into fights as a kid. Yeah. I was like that. And then it's just these things where I I keep you know, you're just like trying to be nice and polite, but I'm like, I keep getting put in these fucking situations. Yeah. You know, like and it's, they've all been in a row, which is funny. You know, like, the fucking dude coming to my church, I told him he shouldn't take communion, he takes communion. The dude trying to rob me. The fucking, I look over, some dude jerking off in the sauna next to me. And it's like, I don't want to know. I just, at one point, what do I do anymore? You know, like, I already fucking tried to hit the, the dude at the bus stop. I don't know. I don't want to fish fight, but I also don't want to fucking, I don't know. Yeah. What do you recommend? Do I start fighting people or what the fuck do I do? You know? No, I think you just start being more assertive. Yeah. And, and but, like, with, but the thing with, with the, you know, especially with straight dudes, I don't know. If, probably It's probably no different with gay dudes, honestly. But when you start putting your foot down with a straight guy, option two is they'll fight you. Because if they don't want to, if they don't want to admit that they're wrong, you would it's be like, so can handle it then it turns into that you would be surprised how many times you never have to I guess but I'm I'm more worried that they're gonna take it there you would be surprised how many times if you're if you're being assertive and you're in the right they might buck up like they want to fight you at first but then something in most people tells them to just relax because they are in the wrong okay you know like mo that's what i found because i deal with mostly straight people you know i'm not in the gay world that much so it's not like that's what i'm dealing with now right you know when i first entered gay world i was wrecking those (laughs) 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 fags. Pull up a gay bridge. <laughs> pull up a gay bridge. I was, I was, I was Can used you to, pull up a rainbow bridge with I was on used fire? to the other world and like these f- got real sassy yeah. sometimes and would get popped. Like yeah. that was happening regularly at those bars. You, you know, know, you know what happened? Quick, quick interjection. My buddy, uh, shout out Jack Stoltman. He actually bought me pepper spray recently because of the whole f- bus thing. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I opened my mail. There's, you know, pepper spray in there, which is pretty cool. Um, but he was at a party and a gay guy kept like being really feely with his girlfriend. Yeah. And he warned him once. He's like, listen, I know you're gay, but not Mm. stop. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And then he gave him a really solid warning and he did it again. And he came up to him. He's like, okay, well, here's the thing is I already told you to stop once and you didn't. So now I have to hit you. So now we're going to fight and this is a fight now. And I guess the gay dude went off to a room, cried. And then came back. Well, he and he was telling that you know the friends went with him because he ran off into a room and cried. He's like, no one's ever talked to me like that before. That's what the oh, gay guy said. And then he came back to Jack and he's like, so sorry, my bad. You yeah. Know? And right. um, yeah, so it I could see two. where yeah I could see where like straight you know yeah that's acceptable yeah. yeah you know what I mean when somebody stops and they apologize. But like, yeah, I've never been that gay guy. Like when yeah. people say that one time I had a woman try to come at me that way where she was like, you know, oh, you mean gay men, the same gay men that used to grab my breast and thought I had no agency over my own body just because. And I was like, I'm not that guy. 
Yeah. I've never yeah. been that guy. I've never been the guy that grabs girls' boobs or, you know, I'm I'm just, yeah. I don't see a point to it. I don't touch your naughty parts unless we're doing something, you know, yeah. unless we're on our way somewhere. <laughs> for yeah. me, that's, there's no point to that. Just like, I don't yeah. like, you know, yeah. sometimes women think that it's okay for them to just grab me however they want to. And I will stop that because it's like, no, I'm not, I'm oh, not wow. for that. You know uh, what I mean? I'm, I'm cool with everybody when they do like the little touch my chest or touch my stomach, yeah. you know, the... Or Bianca hit you with that fucking joke one time. You said you Bianca thought that was funny. Bianca being fun is cool, but yeah. like you know, yeah. any touching of the private parts that shouldn't happen. You know, anything yeah. that's like cross the line. And I'm pretty free. You know what I mean? Like you can even get away with grabbing my butt a little bit. Like you know, <laughs> you're asking for it. A now. little bit. Yeah, you shouldn't have said that. <laughs> yeah, you, know, just, you fucking just dropped a big line in the water. Just a little. You know? Some of the people at home. At that's home. what I say when I said I was getting. Actually, you're asked. Everybody should have believed me because I have a, I have a real line. You know what I mean? I'll let you, I'll let you get away with a lot before I say something's going wrong. You know? Yeah. And it really is about intention for me with people. You know, yeah. except for like I said, I, dick grabbing is off the list. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. That's not. Everybody, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, thank you for watching Slumber Party. <laughs> this has been a much more fun episode than I was expecting because I'll be honest, I was in a bad fucking mood when I started. I wasn't acting. I still do quit. It's not a two week notice. Not true. It is effective today. Not true. It's on your desk. <laughs> Consider this on your desk. Ty, uh, what career are you going to pursue now that you're done with comedy? What do you think you'd be into? Well, I don't want a career anymore. <laughs> My career is going to be ending other people's careers. Yeah, no. <laughs> Professional bridge burner. <laughs> That's what I am. Yeah. I'm just going to ruin people <laughs> that deserve it. Keep your head on a swivel. Yeah, with no consequence. <laughs> <laughs> I t okay, it's time for us to get out of here. But somebody did tell me yesterday, well, you know, if you do that, you're not going to be allowed here anymore. And I was like, there is no consequence to anything I do right now. <laughs> they were just like, all right. <laughs> but we'll talk about that on another episode. Uh, everybody, say goodnight to Nick Vandervoort. Is uh, yes, yeah, it's pretty close. Yeah. What is it? Van, uh, there's. It sounds like Vander. Mm -hmm. uh, Vanda. It's a Vandervoort. There's Vandervoort. No yeah, yeah, it is. Nick Vandervoort. Bye, guys. Otherwise known as Little Nick. I was just trying to give him a little bit, put some respect on his name. Thanks for the respect. I appreciate it. Vandervoort. Little Nick Vander. <laughs> Little. <laughs> it makes it sound even more disrespectful yeah, when you have actually, first and last name. Yeah. But now it's going to be Little Nick Vanderford. <laughs> <laughs> I it love does that. Worse. It feels so much worse now. <laughs> and everybody, si say goodnight to our friend, producer Justin. Producer Justin, are you not going to say goodnight to the people? They're Bye. asking. For What'd you call him last week? I hate you What'd so you much. <laughs> What'd you call him last week? Oh. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Yeah.